Test methods for artificial turf are changing. And today, we're going to demonstrate what was ratified in 2016 as a standard test method for artificial turf and natural grass fields. It is the ASTM E missile, which is this head shaped missile here. This drop test device is used to measure what's called HIC or head injury criterion. The goal is to drop this missile from as high as we can before we cross a threshold of 1,000 HIC. At 1,000 HIC, catastrophic head injury and brain injury occurs. So we want to stay under 1,000 by being as high as we can. This is an internationally recognized test standard. So it's used in automotive industries, protective gear, playgrounds, and sports fields. And again, we can use it to measure the relative safety of artificial and natural grass so that we can use the same device and the same test method for both surfaces. What we're gonna do is we're gonna compare a turf system over different underlayments today. The way this test is gonna work is that we have to drop it from different heights and we need two impacts at least below 1,000 and two impacts above 1,000. And then what we do is we plot the curve of where those values are and where that line crosses the 1000 hit gives us our critical fall height and that critical fall height again we want to be as high as possible the standard that's out there now called the one turf concept has a minimum critical fall height of 1.3 meters so all things aside at a minimum we want to be able to drop this missile from at least 1.3 meters and be under a heck of a thousand for any sports surface Derek is a technician that's been independently certified to use this device because you have to be independently certified and you have to be certified to be able to calibrate it to make sure it's working properly, which we have done prior to this test. So what we do is we drop the device three times in the same location and we average the numbers of drops two and three. Then we raise it to the next height we shift it a little bit so that we are not constantly pounding on the same exact location. We do another three drops. Then we shift it, raise it, do another three drops, and so on. There is a required 30 to 60 second gap of time between each drop. So you have to drop it, then let the sample recover a little bit, and then you can drop it again. For the purposes of this video, we're going to speed this part up uh, just so that we can focus on the end results. There you go. Perfect. We're at our second drop height. We've shifted it over a few inches. And we'll begin again. Got it. Right there. So this is now the 1.3 meter drop. So this would be the representative drop height from the one turf concept. So at the 1.3 meter drop height, we are at a hick of 858 on our third drop. We have to be below 1,000. But remember, we need some failure points as well so we can plot our curve. So we're going to keep going up. So this final drop, which will be another failure drop, which we already know, uh, is at six feet. Okay, so that will conclude the test on this system. So now we've moved our sample and we're going to be testing over the E-layer sample now. And our first drop height again was measured at our 50 centimeter post. And so we're drop one. First drop, second height. Next drop is one meter. So 
So next is 1.3 meters. This is the one turf concept, minimum critical fall height. So on the first drop, the hick is 12, 14, so over a thousand, meaning that this system would not pass the one turf concept standard. Oof, that sounded like a bottom without that. So that concludes the drop heights. We don't need to go any higher because we've already failed on two drop heights. Okay, for our final configuration, we have the same turf and infill now being tested over a 25 millimeter thick polypropylene shock pad. This is the Brock Powerbase YSR. First drop is uh, 50 centimeters. Right there. So that was the third drop. 567. And the, it was 567. So we keep going up. So now we're at a 1.6 meter drop height. So on the third drop from 1.6 meters, we're at 735. So still way below the 1,000 hit. We have to have two failure points above 1,000, and we're still not there yet, so we keep going. Okay. And so this is where you would be dropping it if you had a really good quality natural grass field. And we benchmark really good quality natural grass because that's still what every athlete would rather play on. Ready? Nine sixty one. Nine sixty one. Oh. <laughs> Come on, I'm here to help. This is like it's your guest star. Okay. Okay, buddy, let her rip. <laughs> that was the third one? The HIC test is a really important development in this industry. Uh, just like in all other industries, you know, as you learn more, technology changes, testing changes, and standards are made tougher. So if we look back at children's car seats, they're safer than they were five and 10 years ago. If you look at automotive business, we had cars with no seat belts, then seat belts, and now airbags, and now airbags all the way around the car. So just like with any other industry, when human health and safety is at its core, it's really Really critical to continue to drive the science and to drive the testing so that now we can use something that will explain the likelihood and incidence of head injuries. For 20 years we've been using GMAX uh, to measure something that was really never designed to measure. So uh, we look at this as the next major step forward in our ability to really start to engineer and tune these surfaces to be as safe as possible for athletes of all ages.